Well, hey everybody, I am so excited because today we are doing the first of our author interviews. We are hanging out with author J.M. Sullivan today. She is the author of The Rise of Ursula. We're going to talk all about her twisted retelling origin story. J.M., how are you doing today? Good, how are you? I am doing so well. Uh, I know we've got lots of fun things going on. You and I are working on so many projects right now. I cannot <laughs> wait. We're going to get into a lot of this. Uh, we're going to talk about all sorts of fun and fabulous things. But listen, if you guys are here live with us, we would love for you to go ahead and let us know who you are down in those comments below. Let us know if you've read any of JM's stories before. And if you have questions for her while we're live, please go ahead and pop those in. We are going to be talking all about the rise of Ursula today. And I am so dang excited for this. This is one of the stories that I have read, I actually knew about this way back in the beginning of it, because uh, we did some fun, fabulous things together with this, which is pretty dang cool. We actually launched our books at the same time for this one, didn't we? Yeah, we did. That was the one that we dropped on the same day. That was an exciting day. I, I completely forgot about that. <laughs> Yeah, we had this fun little plan. We we dropped uh, our short stories on the same day. We both ended up number one in our categories, which was so much fun. Um, so you best sellers. But we had, we had such a great time doing this because we didn't tell anybody that this was coming out. This was one of those top secret projects that you and I worked on together. And then all of a sudden, it's just like surprise books. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what happened. <laughs> it was pretty entertaining. I, I enjoyed it. And then I ended up repeating it uh, again a few months later, and it works just as well. So uh, there's something to be said for dropping surprise books, I guess. Secret projects. <laughs> for sure. So, JM, tell me all about The Rise of Ursula. What is it about? What do we need to know about this story? Well, um, it's actually funny that you asked, and I'm kind of glad that you brought up that our secret project, because I'm sitting here thinking, I was like, I know I had to have an idea for this story somewhere. I, I couldn't remember. I was like, what? What happened? How did I get the idea for this story? And then I remembered, oh, yeah, Katie, you bullied me into it. That's right. Okay. Th this makes a lot more sense. <laughs> um, so what happened was um, you had told me about the project. And you're like, okay, so I'm going to do this short story. I'm going to be dropping it. And um, I think you should do it with me, too. And I was like, oh, okay. But I don't have a short story to write about because um, I had some other projects going on um, and I've done like my novels, my Alice story. And I think I might've been in the middle of like writing my Peter story right then um, and like drafting it. So I was like, I don't really have anything, but I have an idea for a little mermaid retelling that I'd like to do in the future. So I was like, well, I could play with the background of the villain for that one. Um, and so, yeah, let's, let's just write a, origin story for Ursula. Why not? That'll be a good time. Um, so I decided to write the origin for the sea witch because here's a secret. Um, Ursula and the Little Mermaid is by far my favorite fairy tale of all time. Um, so I start, my first retelling was Alice and then I actually did Peter and I like those stories just fine. They're, they're fabulous. But my favorite is the Little Mermaid. So writing Ursula was a lot of fun for me because Ursula is my favorite villain, The Little Mermaid is my favorite fairy tale. So I just had to have, got to have a lot of fun twisting it up and just kind of exploring the story and seeing what I could do to change it up. And the really cool thing is that it's not necessarily a retelling in the traditional sense because it's not The Little Mermaid story. This takes place before and we kind of see what happens to create that sea witch, which we then see in the story that we all know and love. And I love that you kind of take a look at her background. So in her background, in her story, she is just kind of like a, a young girl and we get to kind of meet her family. We get to kind of meet her best friend. So tell us just a little bit about the dynamics between those characters. Uh, well, Ursula and Briani are kind of, night and day opposites, actually. Um, Ursula is this kind of brash, cantankerous, sassy, a uh, little bit disobedient <laughs> and stubborn um, girl, and she's got kind of this wild, like, passion inside of her. Like, she's fantastic. Um, and then Briani is the complete opposite. She's the timid, docile, like, perfect girl that everybody kind of wants and that I feel like Ursula 
a lot of times has a lot of insecurity feeling like that's what she wishes and what she thinks her family wants her to be. And so she has this struggle because she has this, this love for her friend, Briani, and she always kind of sees that she's this perfect girl, this perfect everything, and it's everything that she's not when – so Ursula is struggling with that because she loves her friend, but she is kind of wants to be like her, and at the same time she doesn't even know who she is or what she's like. And so it's – I feel like it wasn't intended to be, but it almost is kind of a – pretty strong coming of age story just because there's so much going on in that dynamic that I really didn't intend to be there. Now, I know um, we've got Elle here. She just said that this is an epic retelling. I definitely agree with that. I love all of your retellings, which we're going to get to in a minute because you have more than one. And so um, I know that we've gone through this story and I personally, I know Elle will as well. And those of you who have read it, as well, we want to know, are you writing more in Ursula's tale? Are you kind of leaving us in this lovely little place that you've left us? Or is this something that maybe you want to explore a little bit more? And can we bribe you? <laughs> uh, I, I'm open to bribes. <laughs> yes. Um, I, I accept payment in forms of chocolate and coffee. <laughs> Those are my favorite. Um, coffee definitely makes the words come faster, too. Just saying. So, um, well, I'm definitely planning on doing more with the Ursula and the Little Re Mermaid retelling world. Um, I have some other projects that I kind of have in front of that. Um, now, if you randomly message me and say, hey, let's do another super secret fun thing. I mean, I have a tendency to like to do what you're doing. So you might be able to my arm a little bit. Um, but right now, my I am planning on doing more with Ursula. I'm not really planning on doing anything as far as like a bridge um, between where I left it off now and then where she will be in the Little Mermaid series. Right now, my thought is to just go into that first story in the Little Mermaid. Um, but I do things kind of on whim all the time, so that might change. It, in fact, it probably will change, especially now that I've said it. <laughs> especially now that you've said it and you've kind of given me this direction that you're going in. And the fact that I know that if I kind of hard, <laughs> you'll do it. Elle is in the comments. She is saying that she's going to bribe you with a purple candle or a coffee candle. So uh, Elle's got you covered there. I was going <laughs> to say, I recently, recently, as in a couple months ago, I definitely saw a video on Facebook, I think Facebook, of glittery coffee. So I'm like, going to have to investigate where that was and send some of that to you, maybe, I'm thinking. I mean, I do love sparkles. <laughs> so uh, I think maybe, guys, if we work really, really hard, we could probably make this happen. Um, and probably sooner than JM is planning, just because that's what I like to do. I like to make her do things when she's not planning on doing them. Yes. <laughs> it's awfome awesome fun that way. <laughs> what was that? Yes, you do. <laughs> I do. I do. It's a thing, unfortunately. Can you guys tell we hang out a lot? Like, this is just kind of the way we do things around here. <laughs> It is lots of fun. Hey, listen, if you are with us live, we want to hear from you. If you have questions for JM, now is a great time to pop those in for us. We're going to take a couple of fan questions. We're going to wrap this up in just a couple of minutes. Uh, but if you have questions for JM about Ursula or about any of her stories, which we're going to talk about in just a second, go ahead and drop those questions below. Ella's in the comments saying, it's what you do in general, KM. I coerce people to do things. <laughs> yes, I do. We have lots of success when we do, is all I'm saying. Not necessarily the worst thing in the world. <laughs> okay, so we've got your, and let me show this one more time. We're going to toss this up here. This is the graphic I had up earlier. This is your cover and also your author bio photo. Let me pull this up full screen for you. Check out how pretty that is. Uh, and I know that you've got some plans with some of these novellas. Can you tell us just a little bit about what you're thinking in terms of some of these novellas that you are doing? Sure. Um, well, so I hadn't originally planned on writing Origins until, again, you <clears throat> bullied me into exploring uh, <laughs> Ursula's backstory. Um, but then when I did, I realized how much fun I had kind of exploring the villains' origins and learning more about them and just kind of seeing where their characters take them. Um, and so I had the thought that I would, what I would do then is take 
the villains from each of my series and write their own origin and then eventually compile it into an anthology. So um, I haven't done a whole lot with the short stories because I've been working on, you know, full length projects. But um, so I have my Alice retelling. So that means there will be a Red Queen retelling. Um, and then I have my Peter Pan retelling. And so, of course, we're going to have to have a hook backstory. Um, so I have at least the three origins that I would like to do and build those into an anthology. So it will be kind of a cool little book for all of my my heroes and their anti-heroes. <laughs> so you guys heard it here first. All of her origin stories are my fault. You can blame me. You have to think <laughs> that. Uh, I accept rewards in sparkly things. So there we go. <laughs> uh, Elle is saying that it sounds amazing and she happens to be a big fan of Hook. So there we go. Speaking of Hook, let's talk just a little bit about your other retellings. I know we're focusing on Ursula today, but we do want to hear about your other stories. You have two of them coming out very, very soon. We're very excited about these. I have read these. I do know what they're about. Uh, and some of you may have read one of them already, which we're excited about, and it is re-releasing soon. So tell us a little bit about Alice first, and then let's talk about your Peter retelling. Okay. Uh, so Alice is a um, twisty really kind of dark retelling of Alice in Wonderland set in a dystopian apocalyptic world where these creatures that are very similar to zombies, but we call them the Momrath, have taken over. So Alice um, lives with her sister Dinah, and they're very close. They have a really good relationship. But unfortunately, Dinah becomes sick, and she catches the Momrath virus. And so Alice is forced to go and journey into Wonderland to try and get the cure to save Dinah. When she's there, she meets all of the amazing Wonderland characters who you may recognize from Wonderland. Um, and she has to fight her way through um, this wasteland and be able to find this cure to get it back to her sister in time before Dinah becomes a mom rack. Perfect. Now, I have read this. It is quite the twisted tale. I'm a big fan of it. I know some of our viewers have read it as well. We actually, back in the day, read it in our book club group, which was pretty dang fun. We got a lot of behind the scenes. And I, for one, am super excited to see your origin of the Red Queen. And I am lucky enough to have a couple of secret details about this, which I love. I love getting all these behind the scenes details. So when this is ready, we're definitely going to have to have you back to talk all about the Red Queen story and how you kind of figured out who she was, what she does, how she became to be that red queen that we all know and love to hate. So we would love to hear more about that. Tell us a little bit about your Peter Pan retelling because you have one serious heck of a twist on this. Uh, I like to call it Peter Pan in space. And I think it's so much fun. I, I love reading uh, your early versions of it. And it's coming out not too far away um, from one of my publishers. You and I are actually publishing sisters, which is pretty dang cool. Tell us just a little bit about Peter and Captain Wendy Darling. Um, so Peter Pan is super fun. Um, it's a Peter Pan, and that's exactly how I say it too. It's Peter Pan in space. Um, so what happened is 100 years ago, Captain James Tiberius Hook um, was venturing out in, with the Londoner Brigade, and they were lost. And then... Fast forward 100 years later, Captain Wendy Darling is the up-and-coming, amazing, fantastic, kick-butt Supergirl captain, and they receive a mysterious transmission from her hero, James Hook, who had disappeared. Knowing now where Hook is, Wendy and her crew must venture to Neverland to save them. Which I'm so excited about. I'm... I love what you did with this. I think you have such a great and very unique twist to it. And I know everybody is going to be so excited. Now, when does this one come out? Uh, the Neverland, it, it's not the Neverland Chronicles, by the way. It's the Neverland Transmission, and it is the first book, Second Star, and it is releasing March 5th, 2019. So it seems like forever away, but it's actually coming quicker than it seems, I think. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, and that you also have to have. Um, people doing advanced copy reading for this yeah. one as well. So for those of you who are book reviewers and book lovers, if you get in with the publisher, you might just get an early copy. I know you were just at 
Denver Comic Con. How was that? It was so, so much fun. It was actually, it was fantastic. Um, and so at Denver Comic Con, we actually kind of tried this new thing. Um, and we didn't tell anybody, but when I got there, um, Bleeding Ink had actually provided 25 advanced release copies. So there are 25 people in the world that have gotten Second Star, and they actually get it basically almost a year before it actually hit shelves. So it was really cool to kind of meet people and then be able to talk to everybody and just kind of tell them about my story. And I do have to say, Peter Pan in Space was a pretty big hit. A lot of people were like, oh, well, tell me more. And I was like, I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. And the really cool thing is those advanced copies, that was not just ebook. We know with a lot of publishers, they do advanced copies in ebook, which is really awesome. These were actual physical copies of the book. So they walked away with physical copies of these books. They're out in the world. You can find them on Bookstagram. It's a really cool kind of thing. And you got to kind of sneak it in there to Comic-Con. So I'm glad you were hit there. Sounds like so much fun. I, and I personally loved hearing your behind-the-scenes stories because you guys, when you're friends with authors, you get all the behind-the-scenes stories. <laughs> that's so that's just, that's just a little pitch to come befriend us. We like making friends. We like being social. We like talking to people. And so if you would love to hang out with us, come hang out with us. We're always open to chatting. And speaking of which, JM, as we are wrapping this up, tell everyone where they can connect with you. Um, I am on all of the things. You can find me basically anywhere. So if you are on social media, Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, um, it's just at JM Sullivan Books. And then my website also is www.jmsullivanbooks.com. Um, so you can go find me there. I love, love, love Twitter. Um, I am there a lot doing all sorts of different things and chatting with people. My Facebook game is getting better again with Katie's prompting. Um, so if you find me on Facebook and help keep me accountable, <laughs> get me back on there, that would probably be fantastic. Um, Instagram, you'll see lots of cute pictures of my kids and my cats. <laughs> and yeah, so fun stuff. <laughs> so guys, make sure you are connecting with JM Sullivan this week. Today, go over and have a conversation with her. Get involved in all the fun, fabulous things she's doing. She is very, very involved in social media. So if you are messaging her, if you are mentioning her, if you're commenting to her, she's definitely going to get involved with you in a conversation and she will be happy to chat with you. If you want to learn more about JM, go on over to blog.kmrobinsonbooks.com because we have an interview with her. It is a twisty little unique interview. We're actually going to find out what her characters would say if they wrote her eulogy, which I know was her favorite question that we asked. No. <laughs> It was so hard. <laughs> we also asked things like, how should she paint her nails if she were trying to match her book covers? We've got all sorts of fun, fabulous questions in there. And we are turning this into an interview series. So over the next couple of weeks, I have a number of authors I am interviewing. Each one of them is getting a unique set of questions. So these are not the same old boring questions that everybody asks every single author. These are new. These are inventive. These are a little creative. These will maybe make you laugh. They're a little bit quirky. And each and every one of them is getting hit with 10 unique questions based on their book, their lives, the things that they're doing as authors. And I would love for you to come join us, blog.kmrobinsonbooks.com for more of those. This is the very first one. But next week, I am jam-packed with both interviews on the blog and these live interviews here. And we would love to have you join us for that as well. Now, if you have an author you want to see interviewed here on live or over on my blog, go ahead and let me know in those comments tag the author and let them know you want to see them here. You want to have these interactions with them. And if you are here on our rebroadcast, leave us some comment love and let us know just how much fun you had today. If you have questions, both JM and I will be jumping into the comments later on to get those answered for you. I'm KM Robinson, author of the Siren War Saga and a whole bunch of other books. You can find me by going to kmrobinsonbooks.com where I have world portals for all of my different series, lots of fun, fabulous things. And you can hit me up at KM Robinson Books on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. Also, be sure to look up my YouTube channel where we have rebroadcasts of our live broadcast here on Facebook Live, over on Instagram Live. We have pre-recorded Q&As. We've got behind the scenes. We've got book trailers. We've got character introductions, all sorts of fabulous things over on the YouTube page. I hope you guys will come check it out. And also, hit up my brand new IGTV channel where we will be doing more exclusive content, some of which is shared with YouTube, some of which is totally exclusive to IGTV. And I would love for you guys to come check it out. In fact, 
we recently, just this week, talked about the rise of Ursula on Twisted Tuesday, and JM popped in to give us a little bit of information about the book, which you may not have heard here. So go check it out. Lots of fun. JM, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I do appreciate you being here. It's lots of fun when you come on the show, but we appreciate you, especially when you come on to do interviews like these. It's always fun to talk to you, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, you know, we throw glitter and it's, it's lots of extra fun for us. So. <laughs> Leave us some digital glitter below in the comments, guys, and we will see you next week for more author interviews on Monday. We have our Young Adult Edition show at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then that afternoon, I will be interviewing author Megan Russell about her book, Girl of Glass. And then Tuesday, I think I've got two of them on Tuesday and more the rest of the week. So I will see you next week for more author interviews. We've got some cool things happening. Until then, stay inspired. Bye-bye.